No one can obtain their ambitions until they learn to discipline their mental force and are able to control their thinking. See, that's what this whole series is about. That's what all these laws are about. It's about working with the law. It's about bringing our mind into harmony with the law. It's about letting go of things of a lower nature so we can receive things of a higher nature. This doesn't happen by accident. The greatest marketers in the world, they spent years studying what they're doing. The greatest athletes, they spent years perfecting their skills. There's no free lunch. You're not going to get anything for nothing. You're going to have to make sacrifices. You're going to have to give up something of a lower nature to receive something of a higher nature. This whole universe operates by law. The law is something that happens every time for every person everywhere. Yet we've got to understand that sacrifice is a law. Get in harmony with it. Understand it. It's so priceless. Listen to this. Hollywell said, you cannot enjoy the satisfactions and pleasure of a true friendship and indulge in a bad temper. If you will not sacrifice your temper for friendships, you're going to sacrifice your friendships for a bad temper. Isn't that good? One cannot have a sterling character that friends will respect and trust and resort to crooked practices. If he will not give up his crooked ways of trustworthiness, he will have to sacrifice his trustworthiness for crookedness. You don't even have to think too deep on this to realize it's true. But I'll tell you something you will have to do. You'll have to work at it every day to make it a habitual part of your life, to make it a part of your paradigm. You see, most of the things we do are controlled by paradigms, habits. Paradigms nothing but a multitude of habits. And if we're going to change our life, we're going to have to change our paradigm. We're going to have to sacrifice the habit of a lower nature for one of a higher nature. So do you see, as you study into this, you're going to realize just how important discipline is. And I want to leave you with just an absolutely beautiful concept. You've got to discipline yourself. It's discipline that is consciously chosen. You've got to choose it. Someone else can't give it to you. This is done from within. It's discipline that's consciously chosen, ardently desired. You've got to really want it. Man, I so want to be better at what I'm doing. And patiently persisted in. Patient persistence. Seems like an oxymoron, isn't it? It's not. Patient persistence. Just steadily focused where you're going. You've got it. You've got all the talent and the ability. You've got it inside. But if you're not prepared to sacrifice what you've got, you're never going to get it better. And understand this. It's creator disintegrate. If it doesn't get better, it's going to get worse. You've got to discipline yourself. And you've got to live in harmony with this law of sacrifice. You'll be so glad you did. Working in harmony with the laws. <laughs> it's such a winning concept. I've proved it in my life. My friends all have in their life. That's why they're my friends. We work in harmony with the law. We're not perfect. We're working at it. Every day. I want you to work at it every day. This is Bob Proctor. Thank you. There's a marvelous poem in this program, Working with the Law, by Henley. It's one I have loved for years, Invictus. Listen carefully, then read it over and listen to it over and over. Out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever the gods might be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. 
And yet this menace of the years finds me and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And you know, you can say that exactly the way Henley wrote it. By working in harmony with these laws, and especially the law of obedience. You know, a lot of people grow up and they don't want to be obedient. And, and you're going to find some of the greatest leaders in the past. If you studied their lives according to society, they were definitely not very obedient. Many of them spent time in jail. They didn't follow the rules of the land always. But you know, they were obedient to the laws of nature where they would have never accomplished what they did. Hollywell said that you should be a builder and to him is given all the materials out of which to construct the kind of life you desire to live. You build in wisdom or in ignorance according to your obedience, according to your understanding of a divine law and the use of it in your daily life. Now, you know, being obedient is not always an easy thing to do, but it's always rewarding. I'm not talking about you being subservient to some person that really doesn't understand what's going on in this universe. Let me go back and share with you again what I just read. He said here that you should be a builder and you've been given all the materials out of which to construct the kind of life that you desire to live. Now you're going to use these tools. You're going to build in wisdom or in ignorance according to your obedience to, according to your understanding of divine law and the use of it in your daily life. If you don't understand the laws, you're, you're never going to be obedient to them. You're going to violate them at every turn in the road. Why? Because we have been programmed to. We've been programmed to be good little go-getters, and yet the law says give and you'll receive. We've been programmed not to live in harmony with the law of sacrifice. No, no, don't let go of it. Keep what you've got and get more. That violates the law. Listen to something else that he wrote here. The word obey means to submit to rule or to comply with orders or instructions. Obedience, then, is the governor of all movement, whether it be mechanical, literal, or spiritual. A giant machine without its governor would tear itself apart would be utterly destroyed because it failed to obey its own laws of momentum and gravity. An intellectual giant who fails to comply with the laws of learning will become as an idiot. A student failing to comply with or to obey the instructions of spirit, the law of God, will reverse the good and create evil. We are dependent entirely on obedience for our success or failure in this life. Now, business is founded on obedience, and as each member obeys the laws of commerce, they're going to succeed. You see, as we study these laws, we have to understand that we've got to become obedient to them. Now, I don't know about you, but I spent you know, years, as I think I've mentioned in this series, in the Navy. I wasn't particularly fond of being obedient to the orders that they dished out. First of all, some of the things that were telling me we had to do really didn't make a whole lot of sense, even to a thinking person. And I really didn't appreciate what they were making me do. And when I wasn't obedient, I was punished. I paid fines and I did a lot of punishment on a parade square because I wasn't obedient. See. I am not obedient to a lot of the things that uh, society dictates because I think a lot of people are moving in the wrong direction. But as you start to study the law, you've got to bring discipline, as we just said in the last lesson, into your life. 
It's consciously chosen, you see, ardently desired, and then patiently persisted in. It's such a beautiful way he described it. Well, we've got to bring discipline in our life, and we've got to become obedient to these laws. And if we don't become obedient to the laws, we're going to lose. It's just that simple. It's like you said about a machine that isn't obedient to the laws of momentum and gravity. It's going to fall apart. Well, I think it's becoming apparent as we get into this that this is not something for lightweights. This isn't something for just anybody up and down the street. Although it will work for everyone, not everyone's going to do it. Not everyone has brought discipline into their life. Not everyone follows all these answers. Now, listen to this for a moment. We see in nature the answer. She has no troubles she cannot overcome. She has no problems she cannot solve. She has no burden she cannot bear, no tasks she cannot perform. We're talking about nature. Why? All her operations are governed by the mighty law of harmony and order, which constantly removes every discord, which heals all diseases, which rights every wrong, which supplies every need. Now think, he went on to say, If in the winter a young sprout attempts to break through the soil before season, Mother Nature destroys that sprout, rills it off or freezes it out. Yet, at the same time, the very snow and ice that frees the little unruly sprout serves as a blanket of warmth and protection to all other seedlings complying with her law. When man wishes to use nature in his work, such as farming or gardening, he must know how to comply with nature's laws. In turn, as he obeys her laws, he drives the best results, and in the end, will enjoy the greatest harvest. And you only have to play with this for a little while, and you're going to realize just how accurate this is. He who obeys the laws of nature and acts as her obedient servant later becomes the master and reaps a full harvest. I know in my life, I don't do this perfectly by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm getting pretty good at it. And I'm a lot better at it than I used to be. And you see where it really starts, it starts with understanding these laws. Now, the more you listen to these videos, and keep in mind the videos are just really an overview. It's just a really give you a picture of where you're going with this. But as you dig into this in some depth, as, as, as you get into this, and then as you get into the other, the Science of Getting Rich series that we have, and I'm sure that you're aware of that, as you get into the laws there, we're getting into very basic laws that govern how everything happened. I got to go back and quote Rohner von Braun again. Here's a great rocket scientist. He said that these laws are so precise that we don't have any difficulty building spaceships, sending people to the moon, and we can actually time the landing with the precision of a fraction of a second. Now think of this for a moment. I want you to think of your health. Think of your health for a moment. Just think the health of your body. Now I want you to think of your finances, the amount of money you earn. Now I want you to think of your friends, your social life. Think of your own family, your family. Think of every aspect of your life and understand this. Every aspect of it can be better if you live in harmony with the laws. Now, do you know, by doing this, you could be accused of being selfish. I like the way Oscar Wilde put it. He said, selfishness is not living as one wishes to live. Selfishness is asking others to live as one wishes to live. There's a lot of selfish parents. There's a lot of selfish people. They want people to live the way they want to live. You've got to be true to yourself. If I want to be free, I've got to be me. I've got to be obedient to these laws, and the more obedient I become, the more I'm going to win. But it's based on understanding, and understanding only comes one way. If there's another way that you know of, let me know, because I've been looking for a long time. 
You must understand these laws to live in harmony with them. Understanding only comes through study. Study these laws. Dig into this program. I guarantee you, you will be so happy that you do. And then share it with as many people as possible. You're going to love the magic of it. The law of success. It's a beauty. This is Bob Proctor. Thank you. I sincerely hope that you get as much out of this law of success as I've got out of it over the years. When I came across this, I absolutely loved it. I have probably read this first page at least a thousand times. I've shared it with hundreds of thousands of people all around the world. And now I want to share it with you from how I see it. I'm Bob Proctor, and I want to talk to you about the laws of success as Raymond Halliwell shared it with me. He said, God intended every individual to succeed. Isn't that a nice idea? Every individual. That included me. That includes you. It's God's purpose that you should become great. Do you know, I remember reading a book a number of years ago by Robert Russell. And he said, there's no secret to becoming great. He said, you become great by doing little things in a great way every day. Isn't that good? Well, Hollywell's saying it's God's purpose that man should become great. It's God's will that man should not only use, but enjoy every good in the universe. The law of God denies us nothing. He says, man is born to be rich. Well, you know, I created a program a few years back Uh, based on everything I had learned up to that time, and it was called You Are Born Rich. It's, it's been considered one of the most complete programs on personal growth that you're ever going to find. If you go to bobproctor.com and take a look there, the Born Rich Learning System, because you were born rich. You have deep reservoirs of talent and ability within you. You're probably just a little short of money, but this program will show you how to do it. There's a company in Australia, New Ways, and uh, every one of their leaders give credit to the Born Rich program for taking them right to the top of the company. Most of them have watched it over and over and over again. Well, man is born to be rich. He said the powers inherent in you are inexhaustible. Now think of that. The powers inherent in us are inexhaustible. This is a law. He said, each normal person is endowed with a complete set of faculties, which, if properly developed and scientifically applied, will ensure success, ever-growing success. Do you know, Napoleon Hill uh, said that an educated person is not necessarily a person with an abundance of general or specialized knowledge. He said, an educated person is a person who has so developed the faculties of their mind that they can acquire anything they want or it's equivalent without violating the rights of others. Do you know what the faculties of your mind are? Do you? If you don't, odds are pretty good you're not going to develop them. We're born and raised with sensory factors. We go by what we hear, see, smell, taste, and touch. And do you know what that does? That programs us to live from the outside in. That programs us to live from the bottom up. You're letting the physical control the higher. Doesn't work that way. God works from the higher to the lower. Spirit always manifests through its polar opposite. The non-physical manifests through the the physical. If you're going to do it in harmony with the law, that's the way you're going to have to work. You're going to have to work from the thought to the thing and not from the thing to the thought. You may be saying, well, what do you mean? Well, you don't let the bank account dictate your financial status. Don't do that. See, one of the things I ask people when they first come to work with me is what's the most they've ever earned in a year? I have a business partner, Jerry Robert, who runs the uh, Life Success Publishing. He teaches people to write books. If you haven't got a book, you want to get in touch with it. Life Success Publishing, they're on the site. But at any rate, um, he shows you how books will change your life. Everybody's got a book in them. Well, he had written a book, and I asked him when I first met him. Mark Fair Hansen introduced me to him. And uh, I asked him, what's the most you've ever earned in a year? And he said, $100,000. He was pretty proud of it, and that was pretty good money. 20 years ago, that's when I asked him. 
And I said, if you do exactly what I tell you, I'll show you how to change that into a monthly income. Do you know, within months, he was earning that every month. The Chairman's Club that we have, um, you just go to bobproctor.com and you'll see the Chairman's Club advertise, we teach people to turn your annual income to a monthly income by setting up multiple sources of income. Now he says here, each normal person is endowed with a complete set of faculties, which if properly developed and scientifically applied, will ensure success, ever growing success. Now I'm gonna tell you what they are. Um, I'm not going to go in any great depth on how to develop them, we do that at another time. You have perception. You, it's your way you look at life. You have your will. That teaches you to concentrate. You have your memory. There's no such thing as a bad memory. You have a perfect memory. Um, you have um, reason, okay? That's your thinking. And you have imagination. These are all phenomenal mental tools. And you can use them to develop greater and greater success. And you're going to have to use them if you're going to live from the inside out. Ever-growing success. He said, we're made for progress. Every person contains within themselves the capacity for endless development. Do you know, that excites me. I don't know about you, but I've been working on this now for 48 years. 48 years I've been studying this. And I know that I'm going to study it for the next 48 years. I just want to keep getting better at it. Endless development. Advancement into all things is the law's great purpose. Now, that's a phenomenal idea. Advancement in all things is the law's great purpose. By learning to work with the law and promoting that aim, you're going to build yourself into a greater and a greater success. So you wonder, well, what is the win in me for really studying these laws? That's it. You're going to build yourself into a greater and a greater success. You're going to earn more money. You just keep earning more money. I went from earning $4,000 a year, now I earn millions of dollars. And it's easier. I don't work as hard. Napoleon Hill said, you know, it takes more, no more energy to work with the big idea than it does with the small one. Well, that's what we're saying here. You're going to have more friends, better friends. You're going to live in a healthier body. You're going to enjoy your work more. You're going to work all over the world. You're going to do what you want to do, live the way you want to live. By learning to work with the law and promoting that name, you're going to build yourself into a greater and greater success. Now, listen to this. He said, all of the processes of nature are successful. Nature knows no failures. That's huge. She never plans anything but success. She aims at results in every form and manner to succeed in the best and fullest sense of the term, we must, you and I must, with nature as our model, copy her methods. In our principles and laws, we're gonna discover all the secrets of success. I don't know about you, but that sort of excites me. I know one thing. The tide always goes out, the tide always comes in. The night always follows the day. Winter follows summer. This is the law at work. It's perfect in all of nature. And we can do the same thing. In her principles and laws, we're gonna discover all the secrets of success. Now he says, infinite resources are at our disposal. Infinite, there's no end to it, infinite. There's no limit to our possibility. We can focus and individualize the elements, the forces, and the principles of the whole world. That's a bit of a stretch, isn't it? Do you know that everything in this universe will rush to your aid when you're working in harmony with the law? This isn't some decision of some emotional or capricious God on a cloud. This is the absolute law of the universe. The law is the uniform and orderly method of the omnipotent God. It's the way everything works. Everything works perfect. Infinite resources. There's no limit to our possibility. We can focus and individualize the elements, the forces, the principles of the whole world. We can develop a wonderful intelligence. Thus, all of life's questions may be answered. All of nature's secret discovered. And all human problems solved. Nothing is impossible. Now, you may be thinking, well, the world is in dire need of this. Oh, you're so right. Absolutely. But do you know it's because we're living in harmony with the law that we can live the way we do? Do you know there's some people that have never seen a toilet? Do you know that there's some people that have never seen an electric stove or a watch? Do you know that the whole world lived like that not long ago? Do you know that the electric light is brand new idea relative to most of the population of the world? 
Do you know that these things, everything we've got that we take for granted, they're relatively new. It's all happened just in the last century or so. Think of that. Think of it. This has happened because we start to understand the law. Think of what you can do. Higher faculties, remarkable talent, superior insight, and greater power are dormant at all. And by psychological methods, these exceptional elements can be developed to an extraordinary degree for actual and practical use. That's by you and me. Now, I have been working at this for a long time. I know this to be true. Every mind can develop greatness. There are no exceptions. Simply a matter of knowing how. True self-help, self-discovery, self-knowledge, and proper instructions of applying one's principles and using one's faculties, using one's forces, it'll advance any person. See, the mind is perfect. It's perfect. And man is mind. 